Dominic by William Steig, 11. Dominic and Barney Swain said goodbye. The boar went off with the chest on his shoulder to break the news to his bride-to-be, both the good news that was embodied in Dominic's gift and the bad news about the Doomsday Gang ha having taken his money, which was no longer such bad news on account of the good news. He thought he would tell her the bad news first, so the good news, when he got to it, would make her that much happier, but actually he didn't want to make her feel unhappy even for a little while, so he decided he would just open the chest, show her what was in it, and then explain everything as best he could, trying to make a long story short. And Dominic fared forth on his own way with a much springier step because he had one less chest to carry. Where was he going? He didn't really know, but he looked forward to finding out. Around the bend in the road, he came across an animal lying on the ground, tearing at his own fur and crying his heart out. The animal was wearing dark glasses, a broad-brimmed hat, and a cape that came down to his heels. "'Why are you crying?' asked Dominic, pretending to be taken in. He knew who was hiding under those clothes. "'Oh, pity me!' said the animal. "'Pity me! You see before you one of the most miserable and unfortunate wretches that ever existed on this planet, this morning, this very, very morning.' A lovely morning, as you may remember. I was as rich as anyone would want to be, but now I'm a pauper, and I want to be married very, very soon to one of the most lovely females in creation. But the Doomsday Gang, surely you've heard of them, purloined my money. Dominic was not fooled by this story. The speaker wearing the disguise was the fox, who had forgotten to consider that wise and sensitive instrument, Dominic's all-knowing nose. Dominic would have recognized his smell merely by sniffing something he had touched only lightly a year earlier. How could he fail to smell the fox for himself? How could he fail to smell the fox himself, the very fox who had had him down in the hole, who had attacked him after he buried Mr. Badger? Oh, you poor creature, said Dominic as he put down his load and removed the bandana he carried in, on his spear. You poor, unhappy, ill-treated, miserable, cr mean, cruel, scheming criminal of a fox. Say your prayers, you scoundrel, for you're about to get the what's due you. I have a debt I long to pay. The villainous fox was unarmed, and he knew about Dominic's spear and the way he wielded it. Yelping with fear, he was off like an arrow from the bow. Dominic, right after him, spear leveled. But the fox got away. Dominic didn't chase him too far, fearing that some other member or members of the gang might steal the treasure left unguarded. He came back and studiously sniffed the air. Making certain that no one was around except the insects and birds that belonged there, then he started on his way again. The road now ran alongside a gully where Dominic discovered the rib cage of a large animal that had perished there quite some time ago. It was like a feast laid out for him, and he was ravenous. Despite their age, the ribs tasted good. In fact, age had added a rich, musky tang, which only a connoisseur of bones could properly appreciate. Dominic gnawed rapturously. While the savory bones were receiving his total attention, the fox had recently routed, along with two more members of the Doomsday Gang, another fox and a ferret was sneaking up on him, was sneaking up to attack him from behind. Dominic was inside the rib cage in a sort of succulent prison, and they might have trapped him there, but when they saw him chewing on the big bones with such ferocious dedication, they were paralyzed with terror. That dog, the ferret managed to whisper from his dry throat, is a mighty fearsome creature to have killed so enormous an animal. Yes, said the fox, and he may still be hungry. I didn't realize what we were dealing with. It will take more than three of us to subdue him. You said it, said the second fox. You certainly said it. And they tiptoed off, cautious not to crackle a dry twig or kick a single pebble or make any sound that would distract Dominic from the bones. <laughs>